Now, I'm just continuing from where I stopped in lecture six. And we said this is the cornered equilibrium point here, point E. And if A decides to say, I'm going to produce A1, his intention to be on his reaction curve here. But B cannot produce there. B will respond by producing B1. And you see, if B produces B1 here, now they are on B1's reaction curve. And on B's uh, reaction curve. And then A will respond by increasing his production to A2. And then if he produces at A2, then he will intend to be somewhere here on the reaction curve. But B will respond by reducing his reaction this um, to B2. And then now they are back on B's uh, 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 reaction curve. And then A will increase to A3. And, and when he's at A3 here, you can see that now he's at equilibrium. And then B will reduce further until they are all here. So when they are all here at equilibrium, you can see that now they are on both reaction curves. On A's reaction curve and B's reaction curve, which is fine. This is what Connaught says. Connaught says, you know, because each and every firm is going to strive to be on its reaction curve, therefore, at the end, let me just say, in the end, we end on point E. So therefore, this point E is the Connaught equilibrium. But the most important one that I like so much is um, Stuckelberg equilibrium. And I'm going to write it here to say Stuckelberg equilibrium. Stuckelberg equilibrium here, he says that one of the firm will be more sophisticated. There will be the clever one, and the clever one will play safe. He will want to make more profit than the other one. So what will he do? If B is sophisticated one, he will choose a point on A's reaction curve where B is making more profit. And let me give you the example. This is what happens. This line, remember, and this line, and then we say this is quantity of B, this is quantity of A that they are producing. So if this is reaction curve of A, remember this one is A's reaction curve. And then this one here, the flatter one would be reaction curve of, of B. So remember the corner equilibrium is here. So what A will do is, okay, okay, now suppose the first one here is, we say, B is the sophisticated leader. So if B is the sophisticated leader, B will now choose a point here. And this point here, you can see, is on A's reaction curve. But if you look at what is happening here, I'm drawing a small line uh, isoprofit. So you can see that this isoprofit is, is going to be the inner one. Because if you draw the other one, that passes through the equilibrium um, on a corner uh, equilibrium here, you can see that now it will mean lesser profit. So therefore, B will go for this one. Because remember all these isoprofit that I'm showing here, they are the first one and the second one. This is isoprofit B1. And then this is the first one that is isoprofit B. And then at this point here, and I'll just say point, this point here, this point will prevail if B is there sophisticated leader but if a is the one that is sophisticated a will choose a point here on b section care but this point on b section care a is choosing it because he knows that if he produces somewhere here 
the other one will want to be on his reaction curve and they will end up here. So what is going to happen is if I draw the isoprofit here, you can see that this is the inner one and, 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 and A is making more profit. And then if I draw the other one that will intersect this one in the, at the at this equilibrium here, now you can see that this one here is this is A and this is isoprofit A1. Now at E, the two intersect. But now it means lower level of A. So that's why A will not go any further because he knows that when he's at E, Kind of equilibrium here, he's making less profit. But when he's on B's reaction curve, he's actually making more profit. And then this is what Sir Gerpeg is saying. So this point here will prevail if Fem B is the sophisticated leader, and then this one here will prevail if A is the sophisticated leader but now there are two points that i want to show on this and then we can actually move on to other things and the first thing that i want to show is we say oh let me just put it back again so that you can see you see when you are at this point here when e the profit is not maximized and the reason why the profit is not maximized is because these two curves intersect remember when we were dealing with section d in class i said to you that the profit is maximized if there is a tangent so now if there is a tangent or there is a tangent c between the two curves then that is where the profit is maximized but if you look at Connaught equilibrium here the two curves intersect so if they intersect if this iso profit intersect then there is no Profit maximization. But now the question before I move on, I say the question is whether we end here or we end there. And all we are saying now is that we will be at this point if B is a sophisticated leader. We'll be at this point if A is a sophisticated leader. But what if both are sophisticated leaders? And then now there's no one who wants to be the follower. In this case, there will be what we call a price war. And then they will, the two firms now will fight until they end up at a certain point. And I will show you just now which point is that. And now this is the point where they will end up. So they will end up at this point. This is quantity of B, quantity of A. So, and then... I want you to, this one, you know, this is the reaction curve of FMA, and then the flat one is the reaction curve of FMB, and this is the corner equilibrium, right? So I want you to, to, to remember and recall that we will be on this point if B is a sophisticated leader, we'll be on this point if A is a sophisticated leader. But if you draw more curves, you can see that now you will end up at equilibrium here. And then if you draw, and I can even actually put more curves here so that you can see that as you shift these curves outward, you are reducing the profit of the fan. But if I draw the first one here, the second one here, and, and, and if you look at this curve now, it's, there's a tangency here. And then I draw the second one here now, it intersects this at the, at the corner equilibrium, but now it forms some tangency somewhere there. And then I draw the other one here, it forms some tangency somewhere there. And then these are the tangencies. So now you can see that this curve, because the ones that are going out this way, they are profits of FEM B. The ones that are going out this way, they are the profits of FEM A. So now I'll just say A1, A2, A3. These are, these are profits. And then this is B1, B2, B3, B4. Well, maybe I left the first one here. Well, maybe it's A not maybe. Okay, that's fine. But now, I want you to take note of these equilibrium points here. So if you draw, you join them, you draw a line that joins them, and you call it AA. This is a contraction line. So 
in case of a price war, they will all end up here. And they will end up here because this is uh, where now the industry, and when I'm talking about industry now, I'm talking about both from A and from B. When they are on this line, which is the contraction line, AA, contraction line is line AA. Now here they are maximizing the profit of the firm. And the uh, intention of this lecture was to teach you the isoprofit, the Connaught equilibrium, and the Stagelberg equilibrium. And then I just added the contraction line so that you can see where the firm is maximizing its profit. Thank you very much. I am urging you again to repeat this lecture over and over again. Throw them, check them in your book, throw them again until you're fine.